As a, this is my initiation as an American. Now I fit into Utah. <laughs> So my name's Ross Edgley, um, I'm uh, an athlete adventurer, uh, pro probably best known for uh, swimming around Great Britain, which took 157 days, 1,780 miles, uh, and um, yeah, it was basically just, it was just an eating competition with a little bit of floating as well, you just kind of just like make your way around. Um, and that was about four years ago now, and then it's kind of put me on this career trajectory. Uh, looking back at my career, I, I mean, I had quite a few injuries. Uh, I had shoulder surgery after swimming around Great Britain. Uh, there was almost this um, sort of calcification, I believe it's called, of, of the joint. Uh, I asked if I was injured. They were like, you're not injured necessarily. You've just really used your, your shoulders. So as well as being an athlete adventurer, I've also got a sports science background. So I studied uh, at Loughborough University at the School of Exercise uh, Science Department there. And I'm always basically trying to remain ahead of the curve. So any innovations that are coming out anywhere, whether it's strength and conditioning, nutrition, or or sort of medical. I think what was so good is, is when I reached out to Dr. Adelson initially, uh, there, there's, so, there's so many great studies and, and with stem cells, it's, it's promising and it's pioneering. But I, I really wanted just kind of objective evidence. And speaking to Dr. Adelson, what was amazing is, aside from some amazing stories and anecdotal evidence, uh, what was brilliant is he just kept on sending me medical journal after medical journal and I was just researching and it was just this real exchange. We must have exchanged just hundreds of, uh, of medical journals and uh, after what's been now months, um, I just decided that, that this is something that could extend my career, but, but also as well, just almost thank my body for what it's already done and, and been through. We have stem cells in every tissue in our body and their role is to maintain the health of their microenvironment. Whenever you have healing after injury, it's a stem cell mediated event. These stem cells have the ability to recognize when they're in the presence of damaged tissue. They release proteins that control inflammation, fight invading microbes, and signal for those tissues to go into healing mode. Well, if you've been through what we call suboptimal healing, where either you've had a traumatic injury that doesn't completely heal, or you just have lots of little injuries that over time just accumulate, and you have those changes in the microscopic connective tissue, you're left with what's called suboptimal healing, and that's the changes in the microscopic anatomy. And one of the things that we know that stem cells do is they are great at healing wounds. So what we do is either we take stem cells from a place in your body where you still have a robust population, such as your bone marrow or your fat or both, or we use stem cells from ethically sourced and thoroughly screened birth tissues, such as umbilical cord. We inject that into the area of suboptimal healing thereby tricking your body into thinking you've had this severe new injury without having caused any tissue insult and thereby launching the body's natural healing cascade. This is why as a naturopathic doctor, I feel particularly qualified to use the healing power of nature to get people back to health. With someone like Ross, for instance, he is an elite endurance athlete who does all these sort of crazy stunts and he trains like nuts. And he's always working out and probably not resting enough. And what ends up happening when you tear down your body over and over and over and don't give it enough time to build back up, then you get degenerative changes. The joint surfaces start to wear down. Really, it's a form of a non-healing wound because the surfaces of the joints, where the ligaments attach into bone, where tendons attach into bone, start to undergo microscopic changes in their anatomy. So the Connective tissue is a type of miracle fabric. It stretches just the right amount in each direction. And the nerves that pass through it pass freely through it without getting caught up. And there's just the right amount of microcirculation bringing nutrients to the area and metabolic waste away. Well, when you work out as much as he does over so many years without really that much rest, what ends up happening is that miracle fabric loses its miracle properties. It stretches too much in some directions, not enough in others. 
and the nerve fibers that pass through it get caught up and fire chronic pain signals. The, the goal is just to do more swims, carry on. I, I want to be still swimming when I'm 100 years old in my trunks and uh, just raising loads of money and awareness for, for charities. And, and I'm hoping that that's what sort of starts today at the age of 37, that hopefully this puts me on a career path where I can continue doing what I love. So in the early days, when I first started doing stem cell procedures, my patients were entirely Wyoming cowboys. And the reason for that is because the people who were doing it the very first were large animal veterinarians. And so these guys would have these very expensive workhorses who were getting too old to work. They would take them to this veterinarian. He would do bone marrow stem cells, on, mostly on their hooves, because that's where they tend to get arthritis. And they'd get like two or three more years of work out of them. And this, these guys would say, well, you know, can't you do that to like my low back and stuff? And he'd say, well, no, I can't because I'm a veterinarian, but there's a guy in Park City doing it, go to him. So I started getting these guys who were just busted up old cowboys. They had arthritis through their entire bodies and we would do their low back and we would do their neck and we'd do both hips and we'd do their knees. And just completely as a joke, I used to call it full body stem cell makeover. Well, then Dave Asprey became a patient, and soon, at, soon after him, Ben Greenfield became a patient, and I started getting these people who were interested in longevity, and not just longevity, but being very physically active very late into the game. Because, you know, as Peter Diamandis says, it's about dying young as late as possible, right? And the, one of the keys to longevity is being very physically active late into life. And I would get people say, well, can't you just like do my whole body in a single sitting? And I thought, yeah, actually, I've been doing it for years. And I invited Amy to join me. And so when we do full body stem cell makeover, I do basically every injection that I know how to do. The entire length of the spine, from the base of the skull down to the tailbone, both shoulders, both elbows, both wrists and thumbs, both hips, both knees, both ankles, and great toe. And then I do scalp injections for hair restoration. I do facial injections, microneedling of the face, the, the neck, the, the chest, and then sexual injections. And about half the people we do are people who literally have arthritis through their entire bodies. And the other half are people like Ross who, you know, put want to remain active late into life. And I do feel like a, a kind of workhorse, old, battered cowboy as well. A busted up old cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like that. But no, that's exactly it. And, and I was saying earlier, I think what's so interesting about this sort of point in my career is I'm, I'm trying to be kind to my body, having already put it through so much. But equally, with, with swims for ocean conservation and everything, I, it would be nice, like the workhorse, just to get another two years, another few swims. That, that would be nice. autologous and allogenic. The word autologous means donor and recipient are the same person. So that means stem cells from your own body, usually bone marrow, fat, or blood. Allogenic is donor and recipient are different people. So in this case, it's primarily birth tissues from ethically sourced and thoroughly screened umbilical cords, for instance. Now, people always ask me, which is better? And the truth is, we don't know. We don't know which is better. There is a body of data in both categories, 
it appears very promising in both types appear to be safe both types appear to have some level of efficacy my own personal experience is that we help more people than we don't help and clearly we don't help everybody but in the end at this point we don't know which is better personally i tell people to just go with whatever feels right to them i'm a strong believer in gut instinct and I don't think you can really go wrong with either of them. So what feels right to you is what you should do. Well, good. We're going to do a full body stem cell makeover. All right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to use 100 million umbilical cord stem cells. But we're going to go very heavy in your shoulders. You're going to get an extra dose in your shoulders, both the glenohumeral joint and the rotator cuff. So you'll get a whopping dose in your shoulders because that's your primary complaint. Not really, just a bit like, but it's improving like rapidly, but just a bit, yeah, disorientated. disorientated. I just sort of woke up and was like, oh yeah, Utah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was perfect. Yeah, everything went super smooth. We did the full body stem cell makeover. We did the whole spine. We did all your major joints, lots of extra goodies in your shoulders, lots of extra goodies in your rotator cuffs, which are, you know, kind of beat up. They're a little calcific. They're, you know, mm -hmm. you can see that. But, you know, and you have a little bit of arthritis in your shoulders. But, you know, hopefully we're going to help you with that with this. So it's uh, the day of the procedure. I think it's been 24 hours. And uh, I, do you know what? It's, it's kind of hard to explain what's going on. Because I always preach this, like, physiological intuition. So I'm very in tune with my body. And right now, it just feels like I've done the biggest workout. Like after a workout when there's just this mass repair and regrowth going on inside the body. Like that that's what's going on now. Like you feel like a little bit like bruised and battered, but not in a bad way. The same way that if you had an amazing training session, the next day you'd be going, right, okay, now time to repair, regrow and, and actually, you know, respond to that training stimuli. And I, and I think that's the best way I can describe it. There's just, there's a lot going on right now and now it's my job to just kind of let nature and medicine take its course yeah i think probably what's worth mentioning as well is the dose of 100 million like so often with stem cell research it's so promising and, and it's pioneering at the moment but a lot of people when looking at that 100 million dose they, they kind of feel that they have to go to uh other parts sort of uh, south america places like that um which and again i'm not uh, there's nothing wrong with that I'm not I'm not sort of saying that's that's bad but I just think for me it, it just felt a little bit better coming to Utah in America you it just oh not yeah again just feel a little bit safer feels a little bit more professional like best practices yeah I mean I've had many friends who have had similar procedures and they've gone elsewhere and and they've they've sort of voiced concerns as to the professionalism of it whereas coming out here certainly it, it uh it filled me with a lot more confidence, let's put it like that. Right now, there's a lot of interest in the United States in traveling abroad to receive stem cells. Part of that is because people don't understand that we can do it right here at home. The thing that people can do internationally that we cannot do here in the United States is use culture expanded stem cells. These are stem cells that have been grown in a laboratory. The big advantage of culture expanded stem cells is it dramatically reduces the cost. However, that really is the only advantage because when you grow cells in a laboratory over and over and over, it tends to do weird things to them. The proteins fold up. We don't really know the long-term effects of growing stem cells in a laboratory over and over and over. 
What we can do here in the United States is use naive stem cells. And what that means is straight from the umbilical cord, straight from the placenta, without having been grown in a lab. I much prefer that. The disadvantage is it's a bit more expensive. However, it's much more natural. I arrived to the practice of regenerative medicine from a background of extreme sports. This means that I'm relatively risk tolerant and I'm certainly from the Mick Jagger school of anything worth doing is worth overdoing. I'm fully aware that full body stem cell makeover is not for everyone. The majority of the population, when it's described to them, respond with, that's totally crazy. However, there is a small portion of the population that respond with, that sounds awesome, I want that. Those are the people who think the way that I do. Ross is solidly in that camp. I love my work for many reasons, but front and center is the fact that I get to work with the most extraordinary people and help them on their road to excellence.